What's up, family? Welcome to Mini Bites session 74. And today's topic is multitasking is addictive. My name is Aaron McCluskey. I'm an executive coach. I work with leaders on redefining their professional and personal definitions of success. Stay tuned for my book, my first edition of Redefining Success, A Leader's Guide, available on Amazon later this month. Also, if you haven't done so already and you're in the Philadelphia area, please visit eventbrite.com and register for this Friday's Redefining Success series, Addressing Professional and Personal Isolation. Yes, we will be diving in and understanding more about what is professional and personal isolation from not only a leader's perspective, but also from a personal perspective. So looking forward, that will be uh, taking place on, at Villanova. Uh, so you just go to Eventbrite and do a search for uh, redefining success, actually, and it should come right up. Okay, so diving into today's topic, multitasking, uh, it can be addictive, can be actually a manifestation of addiction. So this particular topic was inspired by a book that I am currently listening to, and the book is called That One Thing. And the the, the book, the context of the book so far um, uh, in my reading, it's really about sort of focusing on that one thing in order to generate a successful outcome. And, and I mean, this is something that's applicable in so many ways. The book was uh, of particular interest to me personally, because as an entrepreneur and someone who is entering actually year four of uh, self-employment, I'm always looking for tips and tricks on how to stay current and fresh. And so I'm always reading or I actually like listening to audiobooks normally when I'm running. And so the recent theme in this book, it talks about how in order for us to be able to focus on that one thing, we really, we really have to get honest about this idea of multitasking. And it continues to talk about the history of multitasking. So the word multitasking was actually originally created to describe a computer action. So it involved computers, machines, not people. The word multitasking was not originally created to define people. It was originally created to explain certain processes that computers went through. And it went on to talk about in this book how computers actually don't even really multitask. They do one task at a time and they, they do it across a series of resources. And I'm not interested in giving any type of a computer lesson here. I just am sharing the knowledge and transferring the knowledge that the word multitasking was never intended for people. And somewhere along the way, somebody very playfully decided to incorporate the word multitasking as a verb to describe what people do. And it makes a lot of sense, you know? And so we multitask, we do it all the time. We take pride in our ability to multitask. We talk about how we are reliable and we are tenacious and we can take on many things at once. Well, guess what? It is actually physiologically impossible to multitask. We literally cannot put in the same amount of effort, the same amount of energy into more than one task at once. We can, scientifically speaking, engage in two things at once, but beyond that, it, it something drops. And when we are engaged in two things at once, it is sort of this divided effort that dilutes the actual value. And so this is not just something that people who are trying to help you live a better life, like myself, say. It's actually backed by science. You know, there was this example given the man is in his car and he's on the phone with his wife and she is asking him to visualize the uh, living room that has recently been renovated and the man is trying to visualize what this room now looks like. And so something else has to drop. Well, he's also talking to his wife with his wife. And so what drops is his ability to recognize and process the car that's breaking in front of him. And so this is something that, why is this important? Well, it all connects to boundary setting. 
and this this goes in the workplace and it goes at home we can very easily find ourselves being pulled in a lot of different directions especially those of us who are considered sort of the rock or the fixer or the rescuer in our family we can very easily find ourselves being pulled in a lot of different directions and so it's really important for us to set boundaries and one way we can very quickly set a boundary is by simply saying I am not a good multitasker. In fact, it's not physically possible for me to multitask. I'm going to focus on this one thing and then that thing. Now, the myth that somebody who cannot multitask, there is a myth out there that if somebody cannot multitask and do various things at once, that they are not going to be productive. There is nothing further from the truth. We actually spend on average 28% of our days wasting time switching from one thing to the next to the next. So you see, when we go from one task to the next task, we actually have what's known as a recovery period that takes place. And that's how much long it's the time it takes for us to become fully present and engaged either again in the task we were working on before the distraction or in this new task. While 28% of the day over a longer period just continues to add up more and more and more. So moral of the story is don't believe that you're good at any good at multitasking. Do not believe it's a possibility trust that working on one thing at a time perhaps becoming efficient more efficient working on that one thing at a time so the task can be completed sooner so you can go to the next task and taking that pause as i always share these things are all options but getting comfortable with trying on this idea and this actual fact that we are not physiologically scientifically capable of multitasking and that word was meant for computers not people love you all till the next time